today on What It's Like, something completely different, 1989 Land Rover 90. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that focuses on the cars and trucks that don't often get talked about. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotic slash foreign cars, loads of orphan cars and cars off the beaten path, dive in deep with specs, button switches and knobs. But most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. John Kemp Starley and William Sutton founded the Rover Company in 1878, originally as a bicycle company, evolved into motorcycles before venturing into automobiles in the early 1900s. Rover would produce bikes and motorcycles until 1925. Fast forward to 1948. That's when Rover came up with the name Land Rover for a utilitarian four-wheel drive vehicle designed for being used off-road, which is a total contrast to the product that they push now. Rover merged with Leland Motors Corporation. 68, they changed their name to British Leyland. They stayed underneath that name for 10 years. In 1978, Land Rover LTD was born. And then in 2012, Jaguar acquired them and they still own them to this very day. Let's talk 1989 Land Rover model lineup. You had the Land Rover 90, the Land Rover 110, Land Rover 127, Land Rover Classic, and Land Rover Discovery. Back in the day, Land Rover offered three wheelbase configurations for their Land Rover product. The 110, which began life in 1983, the 127, and the 90. In 1984, Land Rover introduced the 90, which replaced the 88. The 90 got all of the improvements that the 110 had, like a stronger frame, bigger windows, trailing links in the rear. 1989 Land Rover 90 could be had as a three-door, two-door pickup truck, and three-door panel, as well as hard top or soft top. Let's talk specs. 151.9 inches long, 70 and a half inches wide. It's 80.2 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 92.9 inches. It weighs 3,468 pounds. Price $27,900, which is equivalent to you spending $68,256.68 in the year 2023. Now, it's important to note that that is the base price. These things could go well above 40 grand. Just to put it in perspective, 1989 Lincoln Town Car Signature Series was $29,087, which was a pretty nice class of car. This is a basement model Land Rover. It could go well above $40,000 with options. Our car that we're testing has a lot of options. So when we get inside, I don't want you guys to think that this is a basement model because it's it's really, really far from basement. It's got a lot of options. Because of all the conflicting information and different engines offered in different markets, I'm only going to focus on the engine that is in this particular Land Rover. That's the 2.5 liter, 152.3 cubic inch displacement, inline four cylinder turbo diesel. It's good for 85 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, 150 pound feet of the torque at 1,800 RPM. It's made into a five-speed manual transmission. Theoretical top speed, 71 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption is 22 miles to the gallon. Zero to 60 time, 20.7 seconds. Let's talk styling. Let's back up for a second. Isn't this crazy that this is a 1989? It looks like a 1969 vehicle. The front grille is all plastic. Inside here, this feels like a more durable plastic, but it's plastic. Accessory lights, turn signals, headlights. Just look at all the different textures going on up here.
look at how this is all dipped in towards the center it has the snorkel so if you go in the water that's supposed to help out with that look at how these bumpers are designed just look at how smooth this is fenders flare side marker lights it's got nice mud flaps in the front this doesn't have running boards but a running step also just check out how high that is my knee for reference it comes up to my knee I'm six foot two nice fender flares here in the rear look at how this line continues to run the belt line of the vehicle it's this piece here this vehicle has roof rails drip rails and they're huge like my fingers fit inside that rail windows up at the top here for the back passengers and just look at these windows in the back spare tires mounted to the back more mud flaps down below there's a step to get into the rear compartment look at this trailer hitch so coming to the rear door just notice it has a rear windshield wiper Spare tires mounted on the door. The door has a lot of heft to it because it has the spare tire that's mounted on there. Take a look at this rear section. It's very nice and airy. These look like seats. It looks like you could sit four people comfortably back here. And these are all just parts for the Land Rover. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a real quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. It is actually pretty airy in this vehicle. This is what visibility looks like out the rear from the back seat. As you can see, it's a nice big window. Here is the rear windshield wiper motor for the rear windshield wiper. So you just pinch this, pinch and slide. So sitting in the back of the Land Rover, Creature Comforts, there are some nice windows to look out of. You can look up at the front at the, uh, driver and passenger and kind of feel like a prisoner back here because of these bars there is a dome light so you can at least see grab handles to hold on to when exiting this is what i look like sitting in the back i got adequate headspace there's enough room back here for th at least three other good sized adults to sit back here which is surprising because this vehicle is pretty small. It's on the small side. So getting out of the back, just pull up on this. Exit to freedom. Step on this step here. Coming to the door and getting inside. But before we do, just notice how low this door handle is. Generally, door handles are up higher. This one's like in the middle of the door. It's a little bit low. Just notice how thin this door is. Here's my fingers for reference. It's all framed out. It's on the thin side. It's not the thinnest door that I've ever seen, but it's pretty close. Door panel's made of plastic. This is the door lock mechanism, door handle to pull the door shut, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, it operates like that. Just look at how thin this glass is, super thin. Take a look at this interior. 
coming down inside the pedal box down here clutch brake gas pedal just notice how small those pedals are emergency brake is right here notice the partition so this one has multiple it's a three-door essentially it's got split level entry this is one level and that's the other level and you can't get to the rear from the front and you can't get from the rear to the front unless you take the center out Here's what over the hood view looks like. Here is what first person over the hood looks like. Look at the visibility that you have out of the windshield. It's very interesting because the dashboard almost looks like it sits up above. You're looking over the dashboard and all of the stuff that you can see. Super interesting. Also, just check out how wide this dashboard is. That's my hand for reference. I got like average size hands. It's it's pretty narrow and but the, the hilarious thing is is it sits up about seven inches from where the hood the top of the hood is Anyway, here's first person Underneath the steering wheel. There's tons tons of room There's probably at least half a foot maybe a little bit more than that between my lap and the steering wheel bottom on to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right heat and AC defrost controls, amp meter, coolant temperature, gasoline gauge. Right below it is a panel of hieroglyphics, idiot lights, speedometer, odometer, and tripometer located inside. The other lever on the other side of the instrument panel is for the fan blower speed. Directly underneath the hieroglyphic or idiot light panel are three switches. One is for the four-way flashers. The one in the center, I have no idea what that one's for. The one on the end is for the rear defroster. There are two stocks that come off the steering wheel column on the left-hand side. One is for the headlights. The other one is for the turn signals, and then you push it in for the horn. It's weird. Also notice the ignition is on the left-hand side as well. Land Rover right there. Windshield wipers on the right-hand side. Radio. There is a little vent tab flanking both sides of the radio. That opens up vents on the outside. It's kind of like a cowl vent. Rear windshield wiper clock. And that last one, I'm not sure what that one does. Up above, there are sun visors and they look like this. They're huge. They have a little cutout spot here for the rear view mirror. mirror and it has daytime nighttime feature. The mirror is pretty small. There is also another sun visor over here for the passenger. There's also a place for you to put your tickets or if you have a map or something, that's what that's there for. This one has a sunroof. There isn't a console in the center, but you could put something here. I think this is honestly a good place for a lunchbox. If you had one of those huge coolers, put the huge cooler here. On to the glove box test. There is our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. This car doesn't have a glove box, but it has this storage shelf, I suppose. And it, it will fit inside the storage container getting under the hood the hood release is right here and you have to pull it straight out otherwise it bends so there is a second release and it's right here So there it is, Rover inline force. Four cylinder diesel, air conditioning. This one has overflow for the coolant. Brake fluid goes in this one.
On the positive side, iconic British off-road vehicle that can go down the trails, utilitarian, great greenhouse for visibility, tons of aftermarket parts and accessories available. It has a cult following. This is Genesis for the Defender. Against it, these are crazy, I mean crazy money for what they are. And honestly, I got to drive this car and I have no idea what the fuss is about. There is absolutely no power at all. Land Rover claims that 71 miles an hour is the top speed, but the owner told me his won't go any faster than 65 comfortably. 50-55 is what it likes. It's like driving a top-heavy air-cooled Volkswagen for a ridiculous amount of money. In the owner's words, it's a really expensive tractor. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1989 Jeep or a 1989 Land Rover 90 or a 1989 Toyota Land Cruiser? I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario. 1989 Chevy Blazer or 1989 Land Rover 90 or 1989 Ford Bronco. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving on to name that tune. First person to give both the name of the band and song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description. Until next time, toodaloo!